Hey, welcome to Tina Cooks. Today it's soup two, and we're making a big batch. Hi, welcome to Tina Cooks. I'm Tina Pemmerini. Today we're gonna do two soups. One is pasta della soup, which is the Italian wedding soup, and one is pasta fagiol, which is pasta and beans. These two soups got left out of my first soup show. By popular demand, here they are. Let's get started. Okay, today we're gonna start with a basic chicken broth. This is, <laughs> I got a whole chicken in the water. I'm gonna put in some fresh celery, some carrots. I'm leaving everything big because I wanna either be able to strain this and, and definitely degrease it. What I do is I chill it, all the fat comes to the top and that's how you get a nice fat free, free broth. I'm gonna leave these garlics whole too. I got a bang. I'm just gonna crack them a little bit so that we can get what we need out of them, okay? I'm gonna throw in, usually I like the whole bay leaves, but I have this, so I'm gonna try this. And where I'm straining the broth, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put some bay leaves in there, some nice fresh pepper. I'm not gonna over season this either. I'm not gonna use a lot of salt. Because as we make soups today, you're gonna notice that I use a variety of broths, bases, vegetables. I use frozen vegetables. You can make a soup that takes you four hours and you can make a soup that'll take you an hour. There's about 10 quarts of water in here and a whole chicken. I like to use this base when I make my pasadella soup or what people would call the wedding soup with the little meatballs and the scarola and the eggs. We're gonna show you that one today too. We're gonna put this on this back burner because this, this broth is gonna to have to cook at least two, three hours. It's gonna to have to come to a boil. You always start, when you start a broth like this, you start with nice cold water. You don't wanna start with hot water. Okay, we're gonna let that roll and we're gonna get ready for our next soup. So we'll be back in a minute. This is the meatball mix for my pasta della soup. Now if you've seen the meatball show, it's the same recipe for meatballs. The only thing I do not add in here are onions because these meatballs are done small. And unless your on onions are practically pureed, you don't want them in there. We have onions and celery and carrots in the soup broth. So as long as these are nice and cheesy, you can get away with no onions. And you roll these nice and small, the smaller the better. All right, this broth has been cooking two, three hours. Okay, I'm gonna take the cover off. And I'm gonna slide this over here a little bit so that I can get it, shut it off. Now this is our whole chicken and we're gonna try to scoop him up in one piece. That's why I'm using a colander because when a chicken's cooked two, three hours, man, they fall apart, you don't even realize how fast. I'm gonna slide this right into the dish there. And then we're gonna take our vegetables out. Now when I make this, this chicken broth is for a pasta della soup. Now when I make a pasta della soup, that's very hot, don't do that at home. And uh, we usually, it takes me two days to make this soup. Usually I make the chicken broth, and I let it sit in the refrigerator and cool so that all the fat comes out. And then we start this process the second day. All righty. Now what I like to do is clean 
and bone out the chicken. Now, like I said, this thing's gonna fall apart like you can't believe, so I take the dish. Now, this is really hot. You can wait till it cools down. I just wanna show you how nice this chicken's breast comes off. Get a dish of some sort. I'll use this for now. Okay. I don't want it too close to the heat. It's plastic. There we go. And you just pull it right off. This is the breast. Now, a lot of times, what you can do if this is too much chicken for you for your soup, and sometimes it is too much for me, you can layer this in a baking dish and and, and take a little bit of vegetables or whatever. Make a chicken pot pie or a chicken salad, you know, with mayonnaise or... Okay, and I, I do the dark meat too, I love dark meat. The bones come right out of here. You don't want this black stuff in there, it's just not, just not right looking. Okay, I don't want any fat. Once this cools, I'll go through the meat a little better too. But you have the basic idea of cleaning your chicken. When I do a pasta della soup, I do not have big vegetables in there. I will squash down a carrot or two, you know, just mash it with a fork. I'll show you that when we get to this part. This is really kind of too hot to deal with this right now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here and I'm going to get a colander, a strainer, okay? And I'm going to put over this pot and I'm going to take this broth and I'm gonna take it out of here and move it to here. Now the reason why I'm straining it is I don't want the bay leaves, I don't want the chicken fat, and I don't want big pieces of onion and celery. You can put a cheesecloth in the bottom of your colander. That'll stop everything from going through too. Alrighty. I don't really care if a little bit of stuff gets in there, I like it. Okay. Now the reason why I'm doing this, when I make a pasta della soup, I like to start out with just a basic broth. Now earlier I showed you I was making meatballs. Uh, I'm not going to make a giant amount of this because I'm going to add the rice right to the broth. So I'm going to try to keep it at a serving that I can eat today. I'm going to bring this heat up because what I have to do is I have to cook my meatballs first. It's a process. You know, you get your meatballs ready and you cook your meatballs first. Then when your meatballs are done, you add your rice. And then when your rice is done, you add your vegetables and you stir in your chicken. And then you add your eggs with your Romano cheese. It's, it's, a, it's a process. It's not a difficult soup once you have the broth made. I'm gonna cover this up, and I'm gonna let this come to a boil. So we have to bring this to a boil and put our meatballs in here, okay? All righty. Okay, now our chicken broth is at a boil, okay, as you can see. Now I'm not gonna to worry too much if I don't use all of these meatballs because they're not cooked, they haven't been frozen. So whatever I don't use, I'm going to put into a little container because I can always make another soup later. I still have chicken broth, and even though that looks like a little bit of meatballs, it's still going to flavor up another soup. Okay, cover this up. Now at this point, I'm going to take some of the carrots and I'm going to mash them. Now I don't want this soup heavy, heavy, heavy with carrots and celery and onions because I'm going to have the meatballs and the scadala and the rice that I'm going to add in here. So I am going to um, take this off for a minute. And I am going to add my carrots in. Okay. And I am going to break up some chicken. Now I'm going to let this simmer about 10 minutes or so and then I'm going to add in a third of a cup of rice. 
and Scadala, and we'll be back for that. Okay, now you can see how this is boiling. Okay, nice, nice boil. I'm not gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna stir it. You can see the meatballs are starting to cook. You can smell the meatballs in there. I'm gonna throw about a third of a cup of rice. And this is the scadala that I showed you we were blanching before. It's almost done exactly like the spinach. The only thing is, is you want to wring it out because you don't want all this water in your soup. And you do want to cut it up because it will stay stringy. It doesn't, it's not a mushy vegetable. It's not going to mush out. Okay, and we're going to put this in there. Now I'm going to stir it because I'm, I don't know, see, you can see the meatballs come to the top when you do that because I've added something cold. All right, I am going to add, no, maybe I won't. I think I'll leave it just like that. Now the rice is going to have to simmer 10, maybe 15 minutes or so. I'm not going to leave it on a hard boil anymore. I'm going to take the soup down to a simmer and I'm going to let it go about 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm going to check the rice and the taste of the broth, and then we'll add our eggs and cheese. We'll be back. All right, now this soup is up to boil, okay? I shut, I shut this down just a tish. Our rice is all nice and ready in there. The skidal is in there. The chicken's in there. Everything's in there we need. Now I'm going to beat about six eggs and about three quarters of a cup half a cup of Romano cheese. Now a lot of times people will put uh, breadcrumbs or some type of a stretcher in here. I just use the eggs and cheese. I don't use breadcrumbs. I don't thin it down. I don't add milk. I also, I don't add salt and pepper. The Romano cheese is salty enough and I don't like biting into pepper when I'm eating a nice puffy egg. We're going to pour this right in here like this. Okay, don't stir it, don't mush it around, you cover it up, you're going to let it simmer, the eggs are going to float to the top like little pillows, and we'll show you the final product when we serve it up. Now pasta fagiol is like an Italian staple, okay? Normally when my grandmother would make it, she would use a da palma prosciutto bone. Those are very rare to find today. It's the bone of the prosciutto. I'm going to use a ham, okay, because I made this and I had it left and I, I want to put it in my soup. All righty. You can use uh, smoked ham hocks. You can use a little ham steak. Um, you can start, I, I, it's got to be a ham, a smoked flavor. I'm going to put this in and get it going a little bit. And I use um, great northern beans. You could use navy beans. You could use Catalini beans. You can use whatever beans you want because pasta fagiol is pasta and beans. Okay, these I soak. Now we got this going. Now in this bowl I have maybe three carrots, big carrots, um, maybe a cup and a half of celery, and a whole onion. And I'm going to put this in here. Okay. And you want to get these cooking a little bit. Um, a lot of times when people make soups, what they do is they start with water and they put everything in. I like to cook and season my soups. I like to use broths and bastes. Okay, I'm going to put some salt. I'm going to season now because we want to season these vegetables. Use salt. I'm going to use parsley. I'm going to use some nice fresh cracked pepper. And I'm going to use some granulated garlic. Now also in this um, soup, I did put a clove of garlic. Okay. I'm going to cover this up 
and I'm gonna let it go for a few minutes because I actually want this to get nice and hot. I want the ham to get hot through and season the vegetables. So we're gonna cover this and we'll be back in a few minutes to check it. Okay, now as you can see, it's starting to render out a little bit of the flavor of the ham and the vegetables, okay? We're gonna throw in our beans. Okay, a lot of beans. Probably could have used a little less beans, but that's okay. Now, even though I'm using the ham, I am going to use some chicken base or chicken stock. Because when you add just water into a soup, it's just water. Okay, I'm going to add the rest water because we do have the ham. All right. And then what every good pasta fajol has to have, and I have my big giant ladle. This is it. It's Sunday at the Pimarini's. You gotta have sauce going. All right, let me pull this over because this ladle is so big. We're gonna put a couple of scudellas of tomato sauce in here. That should do it. One and a half scudella. So I would say that was about a cup and a half of sauce, okay? Now, see, you got your tomatoes, your ham. Everything's in there nice, 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 nice. Okay. just to the tippity top of water. Because once we pull that ham out, that's going to go down quite a bit. All right, I am going to put a little more salt because those beans are going to absorb. Now, what this soup actually has to come to a boil and has to be reduced down to a simmer. You want to see it lightly boiling. Keep it covered if you want. If you uncover it, it's going to evaporate, okay? Put a little more garlic in here and a little more pepper. Okay, after about an hour or so, I'm going to come back and I'm going to check, te test the taste of it so that if I'm going to, you know, season or add any more broth or water, um, that would be the time so that it has another hour to go. And this will simmer for two hours. All right, so here we go. We got everything in here. We're going to cover this up and we'll be back in about an hour or so to check it. Okay, it's been about an hour, and I'm gonna check my beans. Ooh, which is very nice. The beans are very good, okay? Now we're gonna check the um, broth. This is really hot, though. Actually, it's probably been more than an hour. It's probably been an hour and a half or so. Oh, it's got a nice hammy flavor. It's a little bit um, shava, though. I don't like that, so. I have some beef base, which is, I mean, I'm sorry, chicken base. I'm going to use about a tablespoon, and we're going to put this in here, like that. I love these bases. It gives the soup a lot of flavor, and I am going to add some salt. It's just not salty enough, even with the ham in there. We didn't add a lot of salt when we first did it. I'm going to lower this down because this is still boiling really hard. You can see how nice that this is. Nice brothy. And those beans are just about, they're going to take about another 20 minutes, half an hour. And while this is going to finish cooking, I'm going to make some pasta because I boil my pasta separate and then I add it to the soup after. Because if it stays in the broth, it, it, it drinks up all the broth. So um, we'll be back. All righty, our pasta fajol is done. Okay, what I like to do, and the reason why I cook my pasta separate, is you're going to notice that there's a lot of fat on the top here from the ham. All right? Now, I try to skim off what I can, but if you put this in the refrigerator, the fat is going to stay on the top and get all hard, and you'll be able to take it off much better after it's refrigerated. Okay? We're going to take out this ham, hopefully, Kyle, back up, because you know how dangerous I am when I'm doing this. <laughs> this is always fun. Okay. And boy, is this ham cooked. Whoa, see? Woohoo! Be careful. Okay. Now, you can either use this ham and serve it with cabbage or something like that, but I, I like to cut it up and put it in my soup. Okay. 
And that's it. Ooh, that, that is falling off the bone. Okay, now see, we're gonna check our beans. Make sure they're nice and done. Yeah, they are, sure are. There we go. Now we're gonna plate up. I'm gonna take a knife right here. And I am gonna cut a little bit of ham so that we can put it in our bowl of soup here. It's just flakes, it's so tender. Okay, oops. Put a little ham in there. All right. I do have some pasta here made up. We'll put a little bit of pasta. And then we're gonna ladle our soup into the bowl. Oof. This will cure whatever ails you. I'll tell ya. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Alrighty. Naturally, gotta have some cheese. What good is life without Romano cheese? And this is pasta fajol. The Pasadella Wedding Soup. Okay, I don't even want to use that ladle because it's got tomato broth on it. This is our holiday best. See how the eggs all formed? I'm not sure you can see it because it's kind of dark in this end of the kitchen. But this soup is a pip. Some people use spinach instead of the scarola. We grew up with the scarola. This is the Italian wedding soup. You can just smell that. It smells so good. Now, I did check the chicken broth flavor before I added the meatballs and stuff. The meatballs add a, a lot of flavor to this soup. So there you have it. This is soup, Tina style. Have a good night.